Introduction Module Welcome to Sting's Alberta Basic Security Training Program, powered by TrainMyGuard.com and accredited by the Alberta Solicitor General and Ministry of Public Security. Topics covered in this unit. Overview of the Alberta Basic Security Training Program. Learning Outcomes. Overview of the course. Preparing for the course. Contact information. Licensing requirements. Resources and currency of material. Welcome. Welcome to Alberta's basic security training program. Thank you for choosing trainmyguard.com. You will learn the basics so that you can work safely and carry out your duties in a professional way. This course covers all the important areas needed for basic security training. It is designed to help you pass the provincial exam obtain your certification, and earn your security professional license in Alberta. This introductory module will give you tips and tricks on how to make this course as simple as possible so you can go on to completing your exam with the confidence and knowledge needed to further your career in security. Learn, know, evolve, and grow. Cheers! The Sting Group Effective June 1, 2011, all persons wishing to become security professionals, loss prevention operatives, mobile security officers, patrol dog handlers, alarm responders in Alberta must successfully complete a 40-hour mandatory training program. Sting's Alberta Basic Security Training Program is accredited and delivered online or in a classroom. The goals of this course are to help you to gain confidence in your abilities and prepare you to meet the challenges of working in security. The instructional materials and activities have been designed to increase your knowledge of your daily activities and duties and responsibilities of a security professional. To that end, learning activities have been structured to resemble elements of the performance which will be expected of you in the field. Use the opportunities for practice and feedback in this course to develop your skills well before you need to use them. During this course, you will become proficient in the skills required of a security professional, including understanding of the law, basic patrol duties, communications, documentation, and emergency scene management. Learning Outcomes Upon completion of this course, participants will be able to 1. Describe the components of dress, deportment, and behavior required of a security professional. 2. Explain federal and provincial legislation relevant to the work of a security professional. 3. List the knowledge and skills required to perform basic patrol duties. 4. Apply a professional and effective communication style for managing and controlling incidents. 5. Demonstrate proficiency and accuracy in note-taking and report writing. 6. Explain how to manage an emergency situation. 7. Maintain personal safety and wellness while working as a security professional. Each student will be provided with a course participant manual which complements the modules and video-based exercises which make up this course. You should actively follow along and work from the manual. How Online Training Works The online APST course is assembled in a professional manner, using contemporary technology and user-friendly web tools. It is easy to access, sign on to, and progress through. One can interrupt the progress of a module and return later where one left off and log in any time of day. The lessons are delivered in text, image, and video clip collaborations with a professional narrator's voiceover presenting the material. Each module is preceded by a pretest and followed by a test, which examines the student's comprehension of the preceding material. These tests are not demanding but do reflect the lesson's content. The course is broken down into seven modules. You will review videos, PDFs, and complete required activities to advance to the next module. At the end of each module, you will take a post-test. Once you achieve 80% or above, you will be able to move forward to the next module. 
Once you've completed all seven modules, you will take the practice final online exam, which consists of 100 multiple choice questions. We highly suggest you're able to achieve at least 80% on the practice exam before going on to take your final provincial exam. Once you've completed all seven modules and practice exam online, you will receive an email to book an exam with a proctor in your area. You must achieve 80% or above on the final in-class exam to receive your ABST certification. The exam consists of 50 questions, a combination of multiple choice and short answer questions. Once you receive your ABST certificate and complete licensing requirements, you are then ready to apply for an individual security license in the province of Alberta. Note, there is a $50 rewrite fee if you fail to pass the exam. Now here is an overview of the course modules. The seven modules which make up the Alberta Basic Security Training course are Module 1. Introduction to the Security Industry Module 2. The Canadian Legal System and Security Professionals Module 3. Basic Security Procedures Module 4. Communication for Security Professionals Module 5. Documentation and Evidence Module 6. Emergency Response Procedures for Security Professionals And Module 7. Health and Safety for Security Professionals In order for you to receive your Certificate of Completion, you must complete all online training sessions, which are equivalent to 40 hours of training to be eligible to write the provincial licensing exam. Make sure you are prepared for each of your online training sessions. See tips later in this unit. Once you've successfully completed the provincial exam, your official certificate will be mailed to you by security programs. This may take up to 5 to 10 business days. So, if you wish to apply for your security license right away, simply request a copy of your official SSI exam results, and we will send you a copy. No, ask questions. If you have any questions, feel free to email or contact your instructor at any time. Preparing for the course. Participants must download a copy of the Participant Manual and a copy of the Security Services and Investigators Act and any other additional resources required. Participants must have a computer with Internet access, a headset or speakers, a notebook, pen or pencil, and a highlighter. Where you learn. A comfortable and efficient study space is important in online learning. Your computer and the area immediately surrounding it is your physical classroom, along with the virtual classroom provided by us. If you are studying at home, it's important to have a good chair and desk to work at, along with a properly functioning monitor and good lighting. If you are studying at work, you similarly need to have a proper workstation set up, along with a place to store your course materials between study sessions. Plan for this with your supervisor before the course and you'll be ready when you sign on. Components of a comfortable workstation. Seat back angle. Seat height. Viewing distance. Document holder. Arm and wrist angle. Keyboard height. Mouse. Monitor angle. And monitor height. Technical requirements. Each student will require a computer configured for and capable of accessing the Internet. It is assumed that students have a basic understanding of Internet Explorer, or Google Chrome, or Mozilla Firefox and are able to send and receive email. Students will require Adobe Reader 7 or above to access the course material. If you do not have this yet, a free version can be downloaded here. Student questions. Ask questions. Any comments and or feedback, please do not hesitate to call us at one 713 2673 or contact us through the training portal or email us at info at trainmyguard.com. We guarantee to answer your questions within 24 hours. Pre-reading activities. There are a number of pre-reading activities for the student. The pre-reading should consist of summarized sections within the course. The student will have access to many resources that should be read during the course. The Learning Journal is a notebook that students use to record course information and insights. It's a virtual tool commonly used in online training programs to facilitate additional learning and is recommended that the Learning Journal be used throughout the course to enhance the learning experience. 
The student is able to type notes directly into their learning journal and then the entries can be printed as notes and or emailed at the end of each module to the facilitator and or the student. Words to know exercises. There's a number of important terms, words to know, throughout the course. The words appear at the beginning of each unit. Many of these words are used in different ways. The list only includes the meanings that are important for the unit. After reviewing the words, try the exercise on the next page to see how well you know the words. You can read the meanings first to help you with the exercises. Activities and case studies form part of this course. All questions must be answered and all answers must be submitted online. Once your answers are submitted, the correct answers will be revealed. Our instructors evaluate, read, and may provide feedback on submissions. Training Evaluation The training and evaluation questions are based on the learned knowledge. There are a number of knowledge-based tests at the beginning, called pre-tests, and at the end, called post-tests. The pre-tests do not count towards your final grades, as they are only to test your knowledge. However, the student must achieve 80% or above on the post-tests to proceed to the next module. Study tips. There is a number of very important study tips throughout the course. Be sure to pay special attention to these helpful notes. For example, some things that can help you learn better are getting a good night's sleep. It's hard to learn when you're tired. Eat healthy foods. The healthier you are, the better everything works, including your brain. Exercise. Even a walk around the block can help clear your head and prepare you for studying and give you a break while studying. The Provincial Exam Once you've completed all seven modules in the exam online with 80% or better, you'll be prompted to book an exam with a proctor in your area. The exam consists of 50 questions, a combination of multiple choice and short answer questions. You'll receive an email with your results within approximately three to five business days. Your ABST government certificate will be mailed to you within about 5 to 10 business days. Once you've successfully completed the ABST exam, you are then ready to apply for your individual security license in the province of Alberta. Licensing Process well, Here's a mini checklist for submitting your application for license. 1. Complete application form for individual license. Simply go to the government website for the most recent application form. You can download and fill it out electronically or print it out. Make sure to print in capital letters, though, and neatly. 2. Make sure to sign Part 5 and 6 of the form. 3. Provide copies of approved ID, provincial photo ID and birth certificate, or a passport, and any sort of work permit or residency documents. 4. Provide proof of approved training with application form, your ABST certificate. 5. Provide police information and criminal record check, including CPIC, vulnerable sector, local database searches. 6. Provide one photograph, signed by local police service. 7. Mail or courier the application package and appropriate fee to the security programs office. No, nope. it may take up to three to six weeks for processing. When you receive your security license, your employer will require a copy of both the front and back of your license. For your reference, visit the Alberta Government website where you can download forms, a copy of the Security Services and Investigators Act, and obtain recent news and updates regarding the industry. Resources Participants Manual Appendix A Employment Standards Act Appendix B Criminal Code Appendix C Forms Appendix D Security Services and Investigators Act Appendix E Security Services and Investigators Regulation Appendix F Security Services and Investigators Act Ministerial Regulation Currency of Material At TrainMyGuard.com, we are committed to providing the highest quality experience for all our students. With continual course updates, every effort is made to ensure that the information contained within our courses are accurate and kept up to date. 
However, the rate of growth and change of the internet content may render certain information contained within topics obsolete prior to completion. Please report any errors, broken links, or outdated material to your online course instructor and they will be fixed immediately. Module 1. The Introduction to the Security Industry. Alberta Basic Security Training. Powered by TrainMyGuard.com and accredited by the Alberta Solicitor General and Ministry of Public Security. Topics covered in this unit. Introduction. Learning Outcomes. Roles and Responsibilities of SPs. Legislation and the Licensing of SPs. Appearance and Conduct of SPs. And Conclusion. Learning Outcomes. Upon completion of this module, participants will be able to 1. Describe the various roles and responsibilities of security professionals. 2. Identify circumstances and explain how security professionals protect persons. 3. Identify circumstances and explain how security professionals protect property. Define the process through which security professionals are licensed in the province of Alberta. State the main provisions of the Security Services and Investigators Act. 6. Describe the main provisions of the Security Services and Investigators Regulation. 7. State the responsibilities and restrictions of a security professional under the Act. 8. Describe the complaints process as identified under the Security Services and Investigators Act. 9. Define and demonstrate professional conduct for security professionals. 10. Define and demonstrate professional appearance and deportment for security professionals. Topics covered in this unit. Introduction. Learning outcomes. Roles and responsibilities of SPs. Legislation and the licensing of SPs. Appearance and conduct of SPs and conclusion. Learning outcomes. Upon completion of this module, participants will be able to 1. Describe the various roles and responsibilities of security professionals. 2. Identify circumstances and explain how security professionals protect persons. 3. Identify circumstances and explain how security professionals protect property. Define the process through which security professionals are licensed in the province of Alberta. State the main provisions of the Security Services and Investigators Act. 6. Describe the main provisions of the Security Services and Investigators Regulation. 7. State the responsibilities and restrictions of a security professional under the Act. 8. Describe the complaints process as identified under the Security Services and Investigators Act. 9. Define and demonstrate professional conduct for security professionals. 10. Define and demonstrate professional appearance and deportment for security professionals. Words to know. The following words appear in this unit. Many of these words are used in different ways. This list only includes the meanings that are important for this unit. Try the exercise on the next page to see how well you know the words. Words to know. The following words appear in this unit. Many of these words are used in different ways. This list only includes the meanings that are important for this unit. Access routes. The ways in and out of a building or site. Client. The owner or landlord at the place where you are working. Confidential means private. Data, facts or information. To detect, to notice, to become aware of. To deter, to prevent or discourage. To enforce, to make sure that a rule or regulation is being followed. To evacuate to empty, to get people out of the area. Evidence. Anything that proves something or gives a reason for believing something. Guidance. Advise or information for solving a problem or difficulty. Hazard. Danger. Illegal. Against the law. To inspect, to look at carefully. Intruder. Someone who has entered an area where they're not supposed to be. Procedure. It's a way of doing things. Responsibility. Something that you must do, watch over, or take care of. Responsible in charge. 
and likely to take blame if anything goes wrong. Restricted means limited only certain people, not for the general public. And site, the place where you are guarding. When you decided to enroll in this course, you presumably did so because you have a desire or need to work in the security industry in Alberta. You may already be familiar with the roles and responsibilities of security professionals, or you may be new to the field altogether. Whether you've worked in the field in the past, present, or not at all, you can benefit from the information provided in this module. Roles and Responsibilities of SPs The Security Services and Investigators Act defines a security guard as an individual who will protect an organization's property, personnel, and information against fire, theft, vandalism, and illegal entry. You will notice we use the broader term security professional, SP, throughout this course. In doing so, we are acknowledging the wide variety of duties and responsibilities associated with security work. However, the definition provided above is appropriate to the audience and content served in by this course. Other terms you might see that are closely related include security guard, loss prevention, executive security, private investigator, in-house investigator, locksmiths, and many others. Regardless of industry sector, the Act is designed to ensure minimum standards of training, accountability, and professionalism. Regardless of job title, all security professionals perform similar kinds of tasks. Some of the activities you will be expected to do in the course of your duties are patrolling of premises and or grounds, monitoring alarm systems and responding when appropriate. Limiting access to individuals or locations. Observing and reporting criminal activity or signs of a crime. Directing traffic. Responding to emergencies. Documenting interactions and events. Presenting a professional image. Arresting those found committing a crime. Eh? The primary role of a security professional is to observe, deter, and report. Security professionals' primary responsibilities are to protect people, property, and information. The primary role of a security guard, as mentioned earlier, is to observe, observe activities, deter acts of crime or vandalism, and report to your supervisor. Protection of persons. Being responsible for the safety and well-being of individuals may involve physically protecting the person, such as serving as a bodyguard or looking out for hazards when a group of people are present, for example, at a large concert. Additional ways in which persons are protected are through detection of emergencies, such as a fire or evacuation, access control of persons to a location, protecting personal property. For example, security professionals are hired to watch backpacks and bags deposited at store entrances, or providing safe walk services to employees after hours, also known as escort service. Executive protection is also known as serving as a bodyguard. Executive protection is a highly specialized area of security work as part of the task of ensuring the safety of a client. A security professional needs to analyze and assess risk and develop strategies to minimize risk to their client. In summary, you may provide public safety, workplace safety, and executive protection. In addition to protecting people, you may be protecting property. When you are responsible for protecting property, you are primarily concerned with the actions of individuals or of that nature. Examples of behaviors you will guard against include criminal acts such as vandalism, theft, disturbances, and fights. The natural phenomenon you may need to respond to are events such as flooding or fire. You may be protecting products and raw materials, premises, employee belongings, and your focus on hazards caused by humans or environmental hazards. Protection of information. It may be the case where you are called upon to physically guard a location where information such as computer data is stored. More likely, the kind of information you will need to safeguard falls into the category of confidential, 
you may have the knowledge as to the whereabouts of a person, an item, an event, and your role is to withhold that information you have been entrusted with. As computers play a bigger role in our everyday lives than in the world of businesses, there are increasing efforts to protect the data stored on hard drives and servers. While you might be specifically assigned to protect workers or a business location, you are in a position to notice when people are accessing computers or similar information on storage devices. As mentioned earlier, one of your main duties and responsibilities as a security professional is to observe and report possible criminal activity. If in the course of your duties you notice an individual or group of individuals accessing a computer in a manner or at a time that seems out of place, it could be a situation where unauthorized access to information is occurring. You'll be learning how to respond in this type of situation later in the course when we discuss patrol procedures. For now, commit to being a skilled and consistent observer when carrying out your responsibilities as a security professional. Legislation and the Licensing of Security Professionals in Alberta Alberta introduced the Security Services and Investigators Act, SSIA, on June 1, 2010, to reflect changes in the security industry in recent years, and to provide an industry-wide standard across the province. The Act is the law, which is to be followed by individuals and businesses working in the security industry. The Security Services and Investigators Regulation and the Security Services and Investigators Ministerial Regulation are the accompanying documents which prescribe how the law will be administered and enforced. This new legislation is likely one of the reasons you are participating in this course. Under the new Act, security professionals must be licensed as follows. Section 3. Security Services and Investigators Act. Security Services. 3.1. No person may, without a license to do so for remuneration, for pay, a. Patrol, guard, or provide security for another person or for the property or premises of another person, or b. Detect loss of or damage to the property or premises of another person. 2. No person may advertise hold out or offer to provide a service or perform an activity described in subsection 1 unless the person has a license to provide the service to perform the activity. The legislation also defines licensing requirements for loss prevention workers. Section 6. Loss Prevention Workers 6.1. No person may, without a license to do so for remuneration for pay, in plain clothes, a. Prevent loss of or damage to the commercial, industrial, or retail property or premises of another person, or b. Detect loss of or damage to the commercial, industrial, or retail property or premises of another person. 2. No person may advertise, hold out, or offer to provide a service to perform an activity described in subsection 1 unless the person has a license to provide the service or to perform the activity. Executive Security Executive security refers to individuals who guard and provide protection to a specific individual requiring personal protection. This license class is exempt from wearing a uniform if desired. If a uniform is worn, it must be compliant with the legislation. Licensing Requirements To support the requirements for licensing, Alberta has implemented application procedures for both individuals and businesses. Any individual wishing to apply for a security professional license in Alberta must meet the following requirements. 18 years of age at the time of application. A Canadian citizen or legally entitled to work in Canada. Competent and of good character. No serious criminal record for which no pardon has been received. No outstanding criminal charges and must not be the subject of an ongoing criminal investigation. You must complete a criminal record search, including CPIC, Vulnerable Sector, and a local database search. You must be fluent in English. The Security Services and Investigators Ministerial Regulation require licensees to communicate effectively with emergency services personnel and the public while carrying out the duties of a security professional. Where an applicant's English language skills are in question, language proficiency testing may be required. You should meet the Canadian Language Benchmarks Level 5 as the minimum. 
The acceptable standard is that an applicant must be able to verbally communicate with 911 operators and emergency services personnel and be able to submit written reports and documentation in English as required by employers and the Office of the Registrar. Successful completion of an approved training course for a class of license being sought. The Alberta Basic Security Training Course applies to the following classes of license. Security Services Loss Prevention Executive Protection Patrol Dog Handler An Alarm Responder For those wishing to carry or use a baton must complete 40 hours of training. Successful completion of an approved course for baton if permission to carry a baton is being sought. An individual wishing to become licensed as a security professional in the province of Alberta within the following license classes. Security Services Loss Prevention Executive Protection Patrol Dog Handler An Alarm Responder must take the following steps. 1. Complete the application form for individual license. 2. Provide copies of approved ID with application form. 3. Provide proof of approved training with application form. 4. Provide police information and criminal record check, including CPIC, vulnerable sector, local database searches, document with the application form. 5. Provide one photograph signed by local police service with application. 6. Mail or courier the application package and the appropriate fee to Security Programs Office. You are not permitted to work until you obtain your security license. Your employer will require a photocopy of both the front and back of your license. It is the role of the province through the Ministry of Justice and Solicitor General to regulate the security industry in Alberta, including both individual SPs and firms and entities that employ them. The aim is to ensure that minimum standards of training, accountability, and professionalism are adhered to in the best interests of all Albertans. The aim is accomplished in part through the Security Services and Investigators Act and the accompanying policy manual produced by the Ministry. See Appendix B, C, and D in this manual for full copies of the Act Regulation and Ministerial Regulation. In addition to providing proof of qualifications, applicants will be required to sign the application form attesting to their qualifications. Providing false information will result in suspension or cancellation of a license. Once licensed, an SP is required by law to carry their license with them at all times while on duty, and to show proof of licensing upon request by a member of the public, except when doing so may impede in an individual's license ability to effectively perform their duties. Members of the public are entitled to know the name of the SP, their license number, and the name of their employer in the event they wish to file a complaint. To withhold this information when requested, it can be an offense in law and may result in conditions being imposed on the license, suspension, or cancellation. Please note that under terms and conditions, training certified means that the SPs have met the training standards for Alberta, or equivalency. Training registered means that they were grandfathered. You are also obliged to provide information as requested by the Registrar and in accordance with the regulations you must abide by the following. Section 3. Security Services and Investigators Regulation Individual Licensee Reporting Requirements 3.1. An individual license who is arrested or charged with an offence under the Criminal Code of Canada or the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act Canada or any other enactment of Canada must within 24 hours provide a report to the registrar in writing of the arrest or charge laid. 2. If an uh, individual licensee loses his or her license, the individual licensee must report within 24 hours. 3. An individual licensee must report any change in information described under Section 18A or B of the Act to the registrar in writing within 30 days. Four. If an individual licensee fails to comply with this section, the registrar may cancel or suspend the individual license or impose additional terms and conditions on the individual license. Section 16, Security Services and Investigators Act, Refusal of a License Application The registrar may refuse to issue a license or refuse to renew a license if the registrar is satisfied that the applicant A 
as contravene or as contravening its act or its regulations. B. Has not met the requirements of the act or regulations. C. Has provided false or misleading information in the application for license or renewal of a license or in any report or information required to be provided under the Act or its regulations. D. In the case of an application for renewal of a license, has not complied with the terms or conditions of his license, or has not provided a report or information required by the Act or regulations by the registrar. E. In the opinion of the registrar is not fit and proper person to be issued or to continue to hold the license, or F has been charged with a criminal offense. Section 16.2 If the registrar on reasonable grounds believe that it's not in the public interest to issue or renew a license, the registrar may refuse to do so. Section 16.3 For the purposes of determining whether to issue or renew a license, the registrar may collect personal information as defined under the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act or personal employee. Information as defined under the Personal Information Protection Act from the applicant or if the applicant's employer is a business license from the applicant's employer. Section 17 of the Act states the license is not transferable. means you must not share your license with anyone else. Section 18 describes the obligations of individuals who are granted a license. These obligations include reporting to the registrar and writing if you change your address, or have a change in any information you provided to the registrar when you made the application for license, for example, updated criminal record check information, or renewed your work permit. Refer to your copy of the SSIA Act, Section 20. It states when a license can be suspended or revoked. Complete the activity in your book. The Security Services and Investigators Act and regulations also contain information with respect to wearing of uniforms, company crests, security, and so on, carrying of weapons, and the public complaint process under the Act. Each of these topic areas will be addressed later in this course. Finally, the SSIA prohibits the way you may refer to yourself or your duties. An individual holding a security professional license may not refer to themselves as a private detective, a law enforcement officer, protection officer, or security officer. Public Complaints The Security Services and Investigators Act allows for complaints against security professionals. A complaint against an individual holding a security license must be made within 90 days of the occurrence of the alleged incident and in accordance with the following process. Submission of a Complaint The complaint process under the Security Services and Investigators Act. The complainant submits a written complaint to the owner of the business or organization employing the security professional who is the subject of the complaint. The complaint must contain the reason for the complaint and the details about the incident for which the complaint is being made. A complaint must be filled and filed within 90 days of the alleged incident. Informal resolution and mediation. With consent of both parties, the employer may attempt to resolve the issue between the security professional and the complainant. Or an investigation of complaint. The organization will provide written acknowledgement of the complaint to the complainant and the licensed security professional within 30 days of receiving the complaint. The organization will complete an investigation into the complaint and provide written notice of outcome to the complainant and the licensed security professional within 90 days of receipt of the complaint. If criminal activity is alleged, a police investigation will take place. The complaint process under the SSIA also permits review in the case where the decision of the organization or business owner is not satisfactory to the complainant. A complainant who wishes to appeal the decision made by the employer of the subject-specific security professional may request the registrar to review the decision. The complainant must make a written request to the office of the registrar within 30 days of receiving written notice of the employer's or organization's decision in the matter. Complainants who remain unsatisfied under review and decision by the registrar may submit in writing 
a request for review by the Director of Law Enforcement at the Office of the Solicitor General and Ministry of Public Security. The Director will advise the complainant in writing of the process and timeline associated with the review. The decision of the Director regarding the outcome of the complaint is final. Appearance and Conduct of SPs Appearance You never get a second chance to make a first impression. How many times have you heard that expression? It is often true and is something you should consider as you enter the security profession. The public will immediately recognize and respect or not respect you and your role based on your appearance and how you conduct yourself. If your appearance is unkept and your manner casual or inappropriate, then likely the people around you will think that you hold equal disregard for the job you are tasked to do. Putting on a professional attitude, communicating with courtesy and taking care that your uniform is clean and neat helps you feel better about yourself and inspires confidence in the people who are looking to you for guidance and protection. The bottom line is, if you take yourself seriously, then others will take you seriously. Your apparel while working as a security professional will be designated by your employer in accordance with the provisions of Part 7 of the Security Services and Investigators Act. And under Section 34, Security Services and Investigators Act, Uniforms and Equipment 34-1, an individual licensee must wear the uniform and insignia specified in the regulations for the class of license that's being sought. Section 34-2, an individual licensee shall not have in the licensee's possession any weapons or equipment except those specified in the regulations or authorized by the registrar. For example... If you're carrying a baton, you must complete the training for baton. Your employer will have a dress code for your organization. Your required uniform may vary depending on the type of assignment you are given. For example, additional safety-oriented clothing may be in order if you are working a large event or directing traffic. You may be required to wear business attire for executive protection or loss prevention work. You may also be asked to cover up piercings or tattoos, which some clients feel may be unprofessional in appearance. Even if your company does not provide specific guidelines, it's in your best interest to portray a very professional image. Uniform clean and in good repair. No rips or missing buttons. Impressed. Hair clean and neatly combed. You should securely tie long hair back for neatness and for safety purposes. Shoes should be clean and shine. Comfortable shoes will go a long way to keep an unprofessional frown off your face. Jewelry should be simple and not excessive. Long necklaces or dangling earrings are hazards in situations where you must protect yourself or others. It goes without saying that getting the right amount of sleep, eating well, and regular exercise are good for your mental and physical health. Many times, security professionals are called upon to work late night shifts or long hours. Taking care of your mind and your body are the best defense against fatigue and have the added benefit of providing you the strength you need in case you are called upon to defend yourself or your clients. Conduct A word that's been associated with the military, law enforcement, and the security industry is deportment. Deportment describes the conduct and behavior of an individual. Another word associated with deportment is demeanor, which describes how an individual responds to other people and his or her environment. Good deportment is necessary in your interactions with the public, as well as your relationships with colleagues, supervisor, and other members of your organization. Remember, you are part of a team. Helping your team be the best they can be will ultimately make you successful and keep you safe on the job. And remember, your appearance, your grooming, personal hygiene, and deportment is really important for your role as a security professional, not to mention customer service. Many people in the security field fail to recognize how important customer service is. Security professionals are often the first and last people to client and customers see. The impression they leave is a vital contribution and can affect the bottom line and the reputation of any business. Remember, Practice good customer service skills when interacting with the public, your client, and the company you work for. You must abide by a code of conduct. The Security Service Act defines that. 
To ensure program integrity, all participants are held to a common standard as it relates to a code of conduct. In developing a common standard that encompasses all aspects of a security license, the legislation will ensure consistency in service delivery and strengthen the integrity of the program. Business licensees are directly responsible for ensuring internal human resource documentation and incorporate the code of conduct required by Section 20 of the Ministerial Regulation. While on duty, every licensee, business, or individual shall abide by the following code of conduct. A licensee will act with honesty and integrity, comply with all federal, provincial, and municipal laws. Respect the privacy of others by treating all information received while working as a licensee as confidential, except where disclosure is required as part of such work by law or under the Personal Information and Protection Act. Abide by the employer's code of conduct in addition to the provisions of this code of conduct. A licensee will not engage in disorderly or inappropriate conduct. Use unnecessary force. Withhold or suppress information, complaints, or reports about any other licensee. Willfully or negligently make or sign false or misleading or inaccurate statements. Consume alcohol. Consume controlled drugs or controlled substances under the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. Possess controlled drugs or controlled substances, the possession of which is prohibited by the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. Bottom line is you must have good ethics. Ethics can be defined as knowing the difference between right and wrong or good and bad. Good ethics can be based on five core values. Honesty, responsibility, respect, fairness, and compassion. Some examples of poor ethics is when a security professional commits theft, falsifies a report, or finds another SP sleeping on the job and fails to report it. Do's and don'ts. Address people formally, such as using sir or ma'am. Manners. Use expressions like please, thank you, and excuse me. Clean language. Be considerate. Your voice should be calm, positive, and friendly. Positive facial expressions. Good posture. Stand up straight. Short positive interactions with others. Remain in control of emotions. Portray confidence. Attempt to resolve conflict using reasoning and effective communication. Show up for duty as scheduled and on time. Keep your break times to the scheduled length. Share information with colleagues, supervisor, and those who take over your shift when you depart. Don't. Don't be disrespectful in greetings such as, Hey you, come here buddy, or use profanity. Raise your voice or use an angry or excited tone in your voice. And don't use negative facial expressions such as a frown or anger. Slouch or keep your hands in your pockets. Flirt, bully, harass colleagues, clients, or the public. Excessive chatting on personal topics with coworkers and other individuals. Rude gestures. Act angry or panicky. Resort to force measures without first trying other means to resolve the situation, like using your communication skills. Don't miss scheduled shifts. Don't arrive late or leave early or leave your post without arranging cover. Show courtesy to your colleagues by taking only the time permitted for your break. And don't withhold information from individuals you work with. This is a job profile found on the Government of Alberta website. Other names for this job is security professional or guard. What do security guards do? Security guards work in offices, stores, apartment buildings, airports, hospitals, and other places. They check inside and outside of buildings. They watch out for problems. For example, a person may be trying to steal something. They watch out for that sort of stuff. Meet a security guard. Al is a security guard. He works at an office building. Here are things that Al does. He walks around the building. He checks doors and windows. He makes sure the doors are locked, and he looks for damage. He checks the underground parking lot, too. He watches a computer. He can see the people at the doors and near the elevators. He has a record book. He writes down the time he checks the building and the parking lot. People ask Al how to find an office in the building, and he gives them directions. 
what does Al's work like? Al works shifts. Sometimes he works at night. He often works on weekends and holidays. Al often works alone. At night, the building is very quiet. When Al works during the day, he talks to more people. Sometimes Al has to call the police or fire department. His job can be stressful if there are serious problems. Al sometimes feels worried. Al works indoors and outdoors. He stands and walks a lot, and he wears a uniform. Do you want to be a security guard? Well, you must be 18 years or older. You must be healthy. You must be able to stand and walk a lot. Some security guards have to sit and watch a computer screen. You may work alone. You may work with a team. You have to be calm if there's an emergency, for example, a fire. You must be able to write notes in a record book. You may need to speak to people about giving directions or provide good customer service. You must not have a criminal record. What education do security guards need? Security guards need a license. They must pass a special 40-hour training course, like the one you're taking here. Some people take different training courses. They'll get a certificate or a diploma upon successful completion. Many employers want security guards to have a high school diploma. Security guards need to speak and write English. They need to have good references, for example, a letter from their last employer, too. For some security jobs, security guards may need their first aid certificate or CPR certificate. What can security guards do in the future? Security guards can work in many different places. Some security guards work in large buildings or stores. Some security guards drive to different places. For example, they check large construction sites. These security guards may need their own car and, of course, a driver's license. Some security guards may become supervisors or own your own company. How much does a security guard make? A security guard usually makes between eleven twenty and thirty-five fifty-one per hour. Study tip. Review, review, review. Reviewing is one of the most important things you can do to remember what you've learned. Review often for short periods of time. This is better than reviewing only one piece in a while for longer periods of time. Review material as soon as possible. After you've been introduced to something new, the sooner you review it, the better you'll remember it. If you want the information to move from your short-term memory to your long-term memory, you must review it within 24 hours. Review We described the various roles and responsibilities of security professionals. We identified circumstances and explained how security professionals protect persons, property, and information. We identified the process through which security professionals are licensed in the province of Alberta. We described the main provisions of the Security Services Act and regulation and the responsibilities and restrictions of a security professional under the Act. The complaint process was identified under the Security Services and Investigators Act. Professional conduct for security professionals and professional appearance and deportment was covered. You should now have a good idea of what is expected of a security professional and the ways in which you can best strive to meet those expectations. The legislation provides the legal framework in which you must perform your duties. Your employer defines where you do your work and under what circumstances it should be performed. But the choice is up to you. Your commitment to seeking a security professional license is the first of many decisions you will be asked to make in your career. By demonstrating professionalism and respect for the law in your organization, you are setting up an example for the clients and community you will serve. As a uniformed security professional, you are distinct amongst the crowd. Keep the best practices you have just studied in mind so that you will be noticed for all other reasons. Be noticed for all the right reasons. Conclusion Are there any questions? Feel free to email any questions to your instructor at info at trainmyguard.com. Now complete the module post test. Thank you.